家好，我是十一号齐萌萌，我来自于中国首都北京，现在就读于约克大学的 Visual Arts Faculty。我是一个性格开朗、非常喜欢追求创新的新时代女生。我非常喜欢去东方广场，因为那里不但有银行，方便理财。还有很多美味的 food court， 来慰劳我们的五脏六腑。我们还可以买到自己心意的漂亮手机，还有我最喜欢的很多漂亮、时尚、可爱的服装店。在东方广场，还有手艺超棒的发型沙龙。偶尔也让自己换个心情，换个发型吧。说了这么多。我最喜欢Society for the Protection of Animals. To my right is Leslie Eve, who、um, is a host and celebrity, and you all know her.、Um, to her right is Patrick Toehill. He is the campaigns manager for the World Society for the Protection of Animals. And to my left is Peter Chen, and he is our community outreach director. The World Society for the Protection of Animals is an international animal welfare organization working to end. Suffering of animals. We work together with over 700 humane societies and animal protection groups in 150 countries in our in our mission to make animals matter and end cruelty towards them. We've invited you to this news conference today to update you on the progress of our work to protect Asian bears. A little over a year ago, the WSPA drafted a statement of support. For animal protection and the use of alternatives to bear bile, our aim in drafting the statement was to secure the endorsements of traditional Chinese medicine associations from around the world, so that we could show that the majority of practitioners are concerned about animals and their welfare, and that they do not prescribe bear bile. The statement, which can be found in this new report titled "Highlights from the International Symposium on Traditional Chinese Medicine." And animal protection says, "I'll read it to you. We express our support for the protection of animals and the promotion of alternatives to bear bile. We believe that the use of bear bile is inconsistent with the modern practice of traditional medicine due to one, the many animal cruelty concerns associated with extracting bear bile from captive bears, the concerns also for wild bear populations." Which continue to be killed for their bear bile in many countries, and three, the fact that at present many alternatives and treatments can be used in place of bear bile. We are pleased to announce today that we have secured the endorsements of 14 Canadian and 20 international TCM associations. These associations represent more than 14,000 practitioners worldwide. 
and their support shows that there is agreement within the TCM community that bare bell farming is unnecessary. This joint statement was originally drafted for the International Symposium on Traditional Chinese Medicine and Animal Protection, which was co-hosted by the WSPA and Ryerson University's G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Studies. The symposium was held in November of 2005. It was attended by a diverse audience of TCM practitioners and researchers, healthcare policy makers, animal welfare proponents, and interested members of the public. And some of the topics included TCM alternatives, avoiding animal torture, and synthetic and natural alternatives to bear bile. The symposium was a catalyst for debate on the use of bear bile, and at the event, the WSPA secured the endorsements of many of the representatives of TCM associations who attended. The statement has continued to gain support, and over the past 15 months, the WSPA has secured more than two dozen additional endorsements from countries around the world, the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, Germany, and China. The partial list of the supporting organizations can be found at the back of the new report, and it also contains highlights of the presentations made at the symposium. A complete list of those organizations who have signed the joint statement can also be found on our website, www.bearbile.org. Support for our work continues, and more TCM associations are signing every day. To tell you more about some of the other work that we're doing in the second phase of our campaign, I'm going to turn things over to Patrick Tohill, our campaign's manager. So thank you, Celia. Um, as was said, this year, uh, WSBA will be stepping up our uh, bear farming campaign in Canada and our public awareness campaign to uh, protect Asian bears and uh, to promote alternatives to bear bile. Uh, there are several key aspects to this. Um, we will be building on the support um, for the joint statement that was established last year um, by reaching uh, outside of the TCM associations and the, the traditional Chinese medical community um, to try to get the support of uh, the Chinese uh, community at large. And we'll be doing this by um, seeking the support of uh, Chinese Canadian business associations and other um, opinion leaders in, within China, the Chinese community in Canada. Um, as importantly, we'll be seeking the support from the public um, for a very simple statement, a sort of uh, stripped down version of the joint statement, if you will, that says simply, um, protect Asian bears and don't use bear bile. And uh, this uh, appeal was first introduced last uh, summer um, at an awareness event held during uh, the Markham's uh, Taste of Asia Festival. And after only three events, uh, two in Markham and one in Mississauga, um, we have uh, achieved 13,000 um, signatures on our giant uh, fabric scroll, uh, which you see here, a piece of this scroll uh, laid out on our, our uh, boardroom table. And uh, this, this scroll, uh, this is only 50 meters worth of fabric. It's, it's uh, more than a meter high, and it's 15 meters long. And we have at least 10 of these sections. Uh, so we have 150 meters of fabric, which we aim to cover um, you know, from one end to the other uh, with signatures. And we got off to a good start, as I said. Uh, last year, we collected 13,000 signatures. Um, we'll be collecting many more. That was just three events. We'll be doing a whole series of events this spring. Um, and we're hopefully going to target the West Coast because uh, everything we did last year was, was in the greater Toronto area. Uh, we'll be uh, heading west to Calgary and also Vancouver. And uh, we possibly might even get to Montreal, so we might head east as well. Um, stamped on the scroll is a bear paw print, um, which you see produced large up here, but it's also on the scroll, and uh, it says uh, in, in English and Chinese, protect Asian bears, uh, don't use bear bile. I think it's a very simple statement um, that most people can get behind. Um, and the reason for this uh, uh, message is that obviously the main users of traditional Chinese medicine 
um, are obviously uh, still people in the Chinese community who've grown up uh, and learned uh, to use bear bob perhaps at, at uh, their grandmother's knee. And you know, we're asking people to, to look for alternatives. Um, what the doctors very clearly told us um, at the uh, symposium at Ryerson University and what we're hearing increasingly from traditional Chinese medicine practitioners um, in Canada and around the world is that there are many alternatives to bear bile. Um, from tui na, uh, to acupuncture, to uh, Chinese herbal medicine, um, alternatives abound and uh, it is not necessary um, for bear bile to be used. It is not necessary for bears to be confined um, to tiny cages um, in which they can barely move um, to produce these medicines. It's not necessary for bears to be hunted in the wild um, for their gallbladder. Um, you know, neither the suffering of the bears in Korea and in Vietnam and in China in the bear farms uh, is necessary, and the, the hunting of bears for their gallbladders is not necessary either. Um, there are many alternatives, and we have seen a great outpouring of sentiment and support for this appeal. And I think we will continue to uh, see uh, more support gather momentum uh, as we enter phase two of this campaign and we, we really intensify our efforts. Um, along with this um, intensification of uh, our efforts uh, come a series of ads which were launched in 2007 beginning in January um, and will continue for the next uh, two months um, on, uh, in Chinese newspapers uh, for major Chinese newspapers in Canada nationwide are running um, uh, a series of ads which Peter is holding uh, to my left and it's on the exact same theme. Uh, bear bile is unnecessary, uh, bear farming is unnecessary, these bears are suffering, um, bear farming is cruel and it, it's, it, uh, there are alternatives so this is uh, a practice that should be phased out. Um, we want it to end and uh, we're very clearly saying that and we want uh, we think that the communities, the Chinese community in Canada and the Chinese community in the United States and in Australia and in the other countries where we have offices and are working on this campaign, um, the Chinese community can help us by sending a very clear message, a very clear statement to our appeal, by endorsing our appeal and adding their signatures um, to our petition scroll when they see us out in the community. Um, you know, the, uh, by going to the website, um, the website offers information, bearball.org. Um, it will be promoted in the TV commercials that will be coming uh, soon. It will be promoted in the newspaper uh, ads. And uh, there is not yet an online appeal added to that, but we're working on an online appeal where people can basically um, add their name to the appeal right online. So um, this will be something to look forward to in the coming months is an online appeal and uh, hopefully a whole revamping of the website as well, which is underway. So we're going to go with the Friends of the Bears theme, and uh, you know, we, we will be changing the entire website, giving it a fresh new look, um, and uh, friendly characters, and, and uh, um, a more friendly uh, aspect to it. So um, we have lots of stuff underway. Um, one very exciting thing that I wanted to announce today is um, we are working on an ad uh, for television, which we'll be shooting um, on Monday, and it will feature uh, uh, Leslie Eat, um, who is well known. Uh, I don't even need to introduce Leslie, I'm sure, uh, to you all, um, for her work on television and radio and uh, her columns that appear in the newspaper, as well as her many appearances at uh, community events. Um, what may not be as well known is that Leslie has a great and abiding affection for animals. Um, stemming from uh, her companionship uh, with the many uh, pets that she has had over the years, which she was telling me about, and that's why she said she is pleased to join uh, with us in this campaign. Um, and as I said, um, the ads and the uh, both the television ads that uh, Leslie will be uh, featured in and also the radio ads are going to promote this idea that these bears don't need to live in these small cages. Um, you know, it's, it's not a necessary thing. Um, and so uh, without further ado, uh, I'm going to turn things over to Leslie to tell, and she'll talk a little bit more about her involvement in the campaign. Technical uh, things to sort of. Well, if it best, please remove the <coughs> water. Okay. <laughs> no, we're advertising for the water as well. <laughs> 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 okay. 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 Okay.
Um, well, first of all, thank you, Kai. And, uh, thank, I'd like to thank the uh, WSPA for uh, inviting me to be a friend of the bear. Um, as Patty said, I have always been very fond of animals. And, um, well, my childhood home actually looked like a zoo rather than a place for <laughs> human habitation. Uh, and I'm also a teddy bear collector, and that's one of the reasons why uh, many years ago, when I was serving on the net, I came across this short video about bear bile farming, and that's uh, before I learned about the WSPA. And when I looked at the video, I felt a certain chill in me that I can you know, still feel right now as I think about it. It is very cruel and it is not necessary. And that is why when Peter invited me to become a spokesperson for this project, I said yes immediately. I would volunteer my time um, and you know, to appear in any uh, apps that they, they would need me to in order to spread the word that bear bow is not necessary and it's cruel. Um, so, well, Pat told us a little bit about um, the production of the PSA I'm continue in Chinese for the benefit of our Chinese media here. Um so I think it's very important to the Jobway,一定要用人類,其實是沒有人用其他的動物,做出這麼殘忍的行為。另外,可能很多人平時對紅人的認識,在動物園,或者很多女生會吵一下,爹爹紅,這樣。但是如果我們認為在藥用的時候要需要這樣去殘害一些紅人 而在我們星期一將會拍攝的這個宣傳片裡面 um, we'll, we'll take questions now, um, but then at the end, we would like to uh, invite Leslie to sign our uh, poster here, um, which says Protect Asian Bears, Don't Use Bear Bile, um, and, uh, and also um, uh, if she can add her name to the, to the, the scroll as well, and uh, if, if people want to take pictures of that, um, you know, get a video of that. In terms of legislation, um, you really can't export bear bile because all of the bears um, that are are used in uh, in, uh, in the bear farms are endangered species. Uh, mm -hmm. Predominantly, they're Asiatic black bears, uh, also known as the moon bears. Um, but we also have uh, sloth bears and uh, sun bears, and all three are endangered species. So under the Convention on the International Trade in Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora, um, which is an international treaty um, about protecting endangered species. Um, you cannot export any kind of uh, endangered species products, um, part or derivatives, so you can't export uh, bear bile. So while it's legal to actually um, produce bear bile in China, and it's legal to produce uh, bear bile in Korea, um, it's in fact never been legal to produce it in Vietnam, despite the fact that it goes on there. Um, you know, it, it's illegal under a Vietnamese national law um, to actually uh, farm bears. Um, but in, in Korea and China, you can extract bear bile and you can sell it domestically. Um, but to export it would be to break the international treaty 
of the CITES Treaty. And so uh, it is, as, as was mentioned, a very gray market or black market uh, product. Um, it, it, uh, as our 2000 investigation um, into the trade showed, uh, it, it reaches into many countries. Uh, we find bare bile um, in Canada, um, and it was sold very openly on the shelves in 2000 um, you know, in, in TCM shops. Um, we have uh, not undertaken a full-scale investigation um, since that uh, 2000 investigation, um, but we have done some preliminary uh, looking into uh, the TCM shops, and we're not finding, we still find it on shops uh, today, um, but it's not to the same extent um, as it once was, so, uh, but it's, do we know whether it's still being traded in, uh, underground? Um, you know, we can't say that for sure. I mean, it's easy to go into the stores and check to see whether it's still on the shelves. Um, it's perhaps a little bit less than it was, but it's still on the shelves. Um, but there's certainly a black market trade in this, this product. Um, a lot of the product that is sold in Canada is from bears that are killed in Canada, so bears that are poached um, illegally um, and hunted for their gallbladders. Um, and uh, some of it is the actual manufactured product. Um, which uh, is clearly labeled um, as being manufactured in China. So um, it's not supposed to be in here, but it's easy to, uh, just as with any profitable product, whether it's uh, illegal drugs or illegal guns, you know, the illegal trade in, in, in endangered species products uh, you know, continues to thrive, whether it's bear bile or tiger bone or rhino horn, um, or you know, if you want these things, uh, you'll get them. And, uh, you know, it's simply not possible to keep all of it out. So um, I think that uh, according to Interpol, um, the illegal trade in endangered species products is, is um, uh, third only to the trade in, in, in drugs and the trade in guns um, internationally. So it's a, it's a thriving trade worth billions of dollars. So, so any idea how much does it cost in the street value for their body? Well, again, you know, our uh, investigations now go back a few years, um, where we actually looked at the sale of gallbladders. Um, at the time, uh, in 2000, uh, you could purchase a whole gallbladder for $600, um, or a piece of one, like a gram, uh, a small piece for $50. Um, it was sold both ways, either as a whole gallbladder or as, as pieces that you would cut up. Um, and uh, if you think about um, the fact that the most recent bust, which I think was in uh, 2003, um, the Canadian uh, uh, federal authorities with Environment Canada working with um, the Toronto Police Service and with uh, the Sûreté de Québec, um, there was a large uh, uh, bust of a, of a poaching ring in Quebec where they confiscated, I think, uh, 600 gallbladders. So if you think that uh, 600 of them uh, were confiscated and each, each had a street value of $600. Um, you're, you're talking about big bucks. Um, so it's a very lucrative trade. And uh, people are, are hunting these bears anyway. Um, and uh, you know it's, it's very tempting uh, to hunt them for their gallbladders. And there's many instances where wildlife authorities report having found bear carcasses in the woods um, with just their gallbladders or their paws removed. And the paws are used uh, as a delicacy mostly in the Korean community, um, uh, you know, and uh, people would consume the paws and believe that it, it gives them some health benefit or, uh, you know, just for the taste of it. So, um, so these problems continue to be uh, uh, experienced and, and uh, wildlife authorities obviously are working um, to combat this, but with any illegal product it's very difficult. So what is the penalty for the people who trade um, bear bows? And what about the customers? Will they be charged if they are found um, buying bear it bear It's actually uh, differs from province to province. Um, uh, some provinces ban only the sale of, of uh, gallbladder, so the, the, um, the person who would be charged would be the person selling it, not the person, not the customer. Others ban the sale and the possession of, of uh, bear galls. Some ban actually the bear galls, others um, will actually ban the medicines as well. They'll say any part or derivative. Um, so the wording differs from different jurisdictions. Ultimately, there's not um, uh, a lot of enforcement um, on the store side of things. So uh, it's mostly on the poaching end. Um, so 
in terms of the, uh, the manufactured medicines, the ones that are coming from the bear farms, which are our main concern, is the suffering of these bears in captivity. Um, you know, there's not a lot of uh, agencies who are looking at are these products being sold on the shelves. Um, the concern mainly seems to be about the actual gallbladders of bears that are poached in Canada. Um, and that's because the mandate of most provincial wildlife authorities is to protect um, native um, species of animals. And, and they're not as concerned about um, uh, these illegal products that are coming in uh, internationally. Um, that is the domain of the Environment Canada Wildlife Ranch, um, which uh, polices airports and also um, uh, ports of call, um, seaports. Um, but there just aren't enough enforcement agencies to catch all of, it, all of it, and there aren't enough enforcement officers to catch all of it. So um, penalties uh, vary from province to province. Um, most involve fines, some involve jail time. And again, it's mostly for the sellers of the, the illegal products, not for the purchasers, but some do make it illegal to possess. What about Ontario? Um, I believe in Ontario, um, the, both the um, possession and sale of, of all bladders is banned. Um, and uh, I think that it's a gray area when it comes to the actual manufacture of medicines because um, there's nothing in the, in the legislation about um, uh, bare bile itself. It's, it's more you know, on the, the gall bladders. So we don't know the penalty. I don't, I don't know the penalty off the hand. I can really look into it for you. So you really think it's on the consumer? You want to try to convince people to not use bare bile, um, to use alternatives instead, and uh, um, let the authorities do their jobs in terms of the enforcement of, of uh, the poaching and, and, the, and the other stuff. Um, and uh, uh, obviously, you know, if we had the power to stop uh, the trade, we, we would. But uh, um, you know, we, we can't do much about the supply side, so we're, we're looking at the demand side. Um, as I said, it, it's going into production uh, next week, um, so uh, it should be airing uh, this spring. Uh, you know, we'll be looking at editing in March and uh, probably going out uh, early in the spring. Leslie, um, we'll present this to you and know that you endorse um, the statement that is within this um, book. Thank you. Big shout. Thank you. Just hold on, hold on. Just to make sure. So. Okay, be here. Uh, here, here, please. Okay. Thank you. <笑>你知道嗎 今天的記者招待主要是讓我們在等大眾知道不好用紅膽救一下這個亞洲黑熊所以變成用紅膽汁其實都可以用很多其他不同的代替品包括差不多七十種的中草藥這個針灸推拿等等其實都可以有紅膽汁的效果差不多的一些治療效能的 啊,剛剛講到WSPA。係,呃,一個世界保護動物聯會,一個World Society for the Protection of Animals簡稱WSPA啦,係一個世界的組織,係一個聯合國的從屬機構,咁佢哋有呢,就有我哋有 
就有、呃、差唔多誒四十萬嘅呢個嘅、呃、會員支持者嘅嚇。咁、啊、我哋喺一百七十個國家嗰度服務，咁同埋咧喺呢個服務嗰度咧，包括咗三個層次。一個層次咧就係大眾嘅教育誒，同埋呢個推廣意識啦。第二方面咧就係同專家合作，希望可以直至咧去減低呢個嘅啊動物嘅受苦。同埋第三樣咧就係同呢個嘅政府咧係去誒幫助政府一齊去搞立法呢方面嘅，等呢個嘅誒動物可以有更多嘅福利。咁所以整個嘅過程之中咧。我哋亦都可以即係直至咧，能夠係進入第四個層面，就係、是、動物本身嚟講咧，係會備受重視，同時另外一方面咧，亦都係令到佢哋免受痛苦，以及增加佢哋嘅福利。你覺得公眾有咩可以做到幫到你咧？喺誒、呃、公眾嗰度咧，誒、呃、其實咧，你哋可以係有幾方面去誒、呃、支持誒、呃、保護動物嘅。第一方面呢，就係、是、誒、呃、愛護動物啦，係基本上嘅呢、這個。第二方面呢，就係唔好用有關用動物嚟做嘅嗰啲嘅誒產品啦。第三方面呢，就係、是、誒、呃、將呢個信息誒傳出去。咁同時另外一方面呢，亦都係可以誒係、呃、支持我哋嘅會啦，或者其他有一啲誒、呃、差唔多性質嘅一啲嘅誒愛護動物嘅會啦，咁樣樣。I'm the general manager of the Sheraton Hotel, mainly a business hotel catering to business travel, government travel, as well as a small to medium-sized uh, conferences and conventions. That we are downtown located right among all the parliament buildings and close to the convention center and close to all the attractions, the museums and the Rideau Canal, etc. So we have a very primary location in downtown Ottawa. We have 236 rooms. We have two very good restaurants. We have the Sasha's Bar, which is a library bar off the off the lobby. We have the Carlton Grill, which is renowned for its good food and for breakfast and power lunches and power breakfast. And uh, we have the Club Lounge, and we are a full-service Sheraton hotel with all the amenities. Over 10,000 square foot of meeting space, which is uh, all newly renovated in the last three years. And the hotel is、uh, in wonderful condition. And the biggest assets we have are obviously our staff and our associates. The hotel was、uh, built in 1972. It started out as a Four Seasons hotel, and the current ownership purchased it from Four Seasons in 1989. The Ottawa is obviously a business uh, uh, city and business destination because of the government. We have a wonderful winter loot facility along the Rideau Canal. The world's largest skating rink. We have great festivals: the Tulip Festival, the the whole summer. We have a great array of festivals, and indoor you have the greatest national museums in the city. Ottawa is a is a four season year round destination to visit. If if people like to have more information about what's going on, they call the hotel directly or contact it through our website,、uh, SheridanOttawa.com.